Hey Dan here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you how to get more free traffic from Google using on-page SEO. The strategies I'm about to share in this video are the exact same ones I use on a daily basis to increase my clients organic traffic by as much as 2000%. So you're going to want to pay close attention to this video if you want to achieve similar results for your business. Make sure you stick all the way to the end of this video and let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite on-site SEO tip is. Now let's jump right into the video. The first step to growing your traffic is to figure out out the searcher's intent because no on-page, on-site or off-site SEO strategy will rank a keyword long-term in Google if the page doesn't give the user what they're looking for. Search Google for your keyword and take notes on the types of pages that are ranking in the SERPs. Is Google showing product pages, product category pages, blog posts, blog category pages, gallery pages, business directories, service pages, or home pages. By finding the intent behind a search term, we can increase both our organic rankings and conversion rate. Let's take a look at two very similar keywords that have different intents. The SERP results for the keyword computer chair are completely dominated with product category pages. This means most people searching this keyword are looking for a product to buy. To do well for this keyword, you must include products on your page. On the other hand, the SERPs for the keyword best computer chair for long hours features mainly blog posts, which means people are gathering information to influence their buying decision. To do well for this keyword, you need to create a blog style guide. The next most important SEO factor is your meta title tag. The meta title tag is one of the most important on-page SEO factors on your entire web page. It gives a clear indication to Google what your page is about and is the heading text customers see in the Google listings. This needs to be optimized around both keywords and click-through rate if you want a chance of ranking in Google. Your best bet is to put your main target keyword at the beginning of your title tag and use keyword modifiers to increase your chances of showing up for additional long tail keywords. For transactional keywords like computer chair, these keyword modifiers include buy, order, purchase, free delivery, next day delivery, on finance, cheap, deals, online and sale. For informational keywords, these include guide, review, best, checklist and how to. You should also try to include as many keyword variations in your title tag too, to ensure you show up for as many keywords as possible. And for increasing your click-through rate, try adding a clear call to action as well as a clear benefit or solution to the problem the searcher is trying to solve. Finally, if you're a well-established brand that has a good public perception, adding your company name to the end of your title tag can help increase your click-through rate as people are more likely to trust a company they've previously heard of. Fitting all of this into the 50 to 60 character limit is often impossible, and so should be prioritized in this order. Using the example of computer chair, here's a title tag that would perform very well. Computer chairs and office chairs, buy online now, company. The keyword is at the beginning of the title tag. It includes office chairs, which is a variation of our keyword that gets frequently searched. It contains the transactional keyword modifiers buy and online, which helps you rank for keywords that are more likely to result in a sale. It says buy online now, which is a clear call to action resulting in a higher click-through rate. And it uses the company name, which can help increase the click-through rate for a well-established company. Plus, by using the ampersand character in place of the word and, I've freed up two extra spaces. The next important on-page SEO factor is the meta description. This is the text you see underneath your meta title tag in Google SERPs. Many SEOs argue that there's no direct correlation between having an optimized meta description and high Google rankings, which is great news for you as they're completely wrong. Instead of thinking about meta descriptions in terms of Google's algorithm, think about them in terms of click-through rates, as that does affect your rankings. And the best way to get a higher click-through rate is to focus on the main benefit the user will find on your web page. If you don't know what that is, one of the fastest ways to find out is to research the most popular search terms surrounding your main keyword. People are far more open to telling Google what they really want from a product than they are in person, as there's no human being standing opposite them judging them for what they say they want it for. Let's look at our example keyword computer chair. Ahrefs' phrase match results show that people commonly search for white, best, leather, gaming, cheap, ergonomic, pink, comfy and for long hours. This means that the customer wants a chair that will make them look and feel good throughout the entire day without paying more than they should. We should keep that in mind when writing our meta description. We should also include our main focus keywords somewhere in the meta description too, as Google puts the keywords in bold when it matches the searcher's query, 
making your SERP listing stand out more and increasing your overall click-through rate. It doesn't need to be at the beginning of your meta description like it does with the title tag, but it needs to be in there somewhere. We should also include keyword variations and modifiers too, as we'll have a greater chance of getting bold text for a wider range of search queries. And last but not least, we also need to have a clear call to action to tell people exactly what they need to do. Something like book a free appointment today, call us now for free help, order today, buy online now with free delivery, find out how, or speak to our friendly team. This is again used to increase your listing's click-through rate as well as your conversion rate in some instances. The meta description length should be between 90 to 157 characters long, giving us enough room to include every aspect we just went through. Using our computer chair example, the following meta description would perform very well. Buy modern computer chairs and office chairs online with free delivery. Comfy desk chairs ideal for long hours. Lowest price guaranteed, order now. We have three keyword variations, computer chairs, office chairs, and desk chairs, giving us the best chance of having bold text in our meta description for the widest range of search queries. We've said they're modern, which indicates it will meet their style desires and make them look good. Plus, it's also a keyword modifier. We've said they're comfy and ideal for long hours, which means that they'll be getting a chair that will make them feel good throughout the entire day and are also keyword modifiers. We've included the words buy, free delivery, order and online, which are all transactional keywords. We have a clear call to action that says order now, and we've said lowest price guaranteed, which should answer the price objection at this stage. The next on-page SEO factor we need to focus on is the page's URL. The best way to structure your website's URLs is to make them as short as possible while including your main keyword. Having your main target keyword in the URL is a direct ranking factor, so take your keyword, replace the spaces with hyphens and use that as your URL. For example, if you're targeting computer chair with an e-commerce category page, your URL should be computer hyphen chair. Using these short, clean, keyword optimized URLs not only aids in your organic rankings by making it easier for Google to understand, it also makes it easier for people to understand. And although Google isn't showing URLs in the SERPs anymore, a large amount of the people who naturally post links to a web page use naked links, which means they use the URL as the anchor text. And having a clean URL like company.co.uk forward slash computer chairs tells people exactly what they can expect when they click on the link. Whereas company.co.uk forward slash question mark P equals 949 does not and will result in a much lower click through rate. Our next important on page SEO factor is the H1 tag. This is one of the biggest SEO factors on your entire page as Google uses it to understand what your page is about. So it's very important to include your target keyword in the H1 tag if you want to rank in Google. Make sure you only use one H1 tag per page as it's commonly believed that using more than one causes the positive ranking signals you give through your H1 tag to dilute. You should also include keyword variations in your H1 tag if you can do so without it looking spammy. Finally, your H1 tag should convey a very similar message to your title tag for congruency. Failing to do so will result in a high bounce rate which will decrease your Google rankings. This is especially true when it comes to content marketing as it can make the searcher feel like they've clicked on the wrong page. A good example of a H1 tag for our keyword computer chair would be office computer chairs. It contains our keyword computer chair. It also contains a keyword variation making it more likely to rank for office chairs. It's congruent with our title tag and meta descriptions and it tells the visitors exactly what they're looking at. The next on-page SEO factor is your page's content. This is super important stuff when it comes to ranking on the first page of Google, but the way you go about it will depend heavily on the type of keyword you're targeting. As a general best practice, I would recommend putting the keyword you're targeting in the first paragraph of text. You should also include other keyword variations and LSI keywords throughout the copy to really make it clear to Google what your page is about. You'll also want to mention the main target keyword a few times throughout the page, but you really don't want to overdo it, as there are over-optimization penalties that will stop you ranking altogether. Now you may have heard previously that the best keyword density is between 1-2% to but the truth is there is no global keyword density to stick to, it all depends on the keyword. You can find the best keyword density for your keyword by taking a look at Google's top results for your desired keyword. Open the top 4 ranking pages and work out the keyword density of each. The average of these pages is going to be your page's ideal keyword density. You can use free tools like SEOquake or paid tools like Page Optimizer Pro or Quora to help you speed up this process. The next important on-page SEO factor you need to focus on is your images. 
The way you use images on your web page can either bring you in more traffic and increase your Google rankings, or destroy your SEO and drop you off the first page, so don't skip over this step. It may sound exaggerated, but your images can really slow down the page load time, and something both Google and users are hot on is how long it takes for your page to load. People expect your website to load as soon as they click on your SERP listing, and if it doesn't, they'll hit back and find a faster site. This is a huge SEO problem as it indicates to Google that your page isn't serving the user very well. So it's critical important your images load as fast as possible on your most important landing pages. In almost every instance you should be saving your images as .jpegs as they have a smaller file size. The only two drawbacks to .jpegs is that they can't do animation or transparency. For transparency use .jpegs and for animation use .gif. Another good way to really make the images load faster on your site is to compress them. Compression removes much of the unused data stored inside your image file, often resulting in as much as a 45% decrease in image file size. You can run your images through a tool like TinyPNG to compress them for free. Another great tip for image file size optimization is to ensure the dimensions of your image do not exceed what you actually need. For example, if your image width is 700 pixels, but it only ever gets displayed at a maximum of 500 pixels on your website, you could reduce the physical width of your image by 200 pixels. Now when it comes to the image code on-page SEO attributes, there are two important elements, the image file name and the alt text. Calling an image image1.jpg makes it hard for Google to understand what the image is. You should instead call the image something descriptive and include your keyword in the file name. For example, if your main keyword is computer chair and your image shows an office environment with employees sitting on the computer chairs, call the image computer hyphen chairs hyphen in hyphen office dot jpeg. It's descriptive and has the keyword in the file name. You also want to include alt text on every image featured on your page and make sure you include your keyword inside the alt text. In most instances, make your file name and alt text the same, just replace the spaces with hyphens in the file name. By following this process, you can also bring in a large amount of traffic from Google's image search, which is great for any industry where people are considering the look of the product as a main influencing factor. Think clothes, furniture, interior design, etc. Here's a screenshot of my kitchen design client's Google Search Console report showing how much free traffic has come through Google image search. The final important on-page SEO factor we're going to be looking at in this video is links. Now there's two types of links you should be building for your on-page SEO, and that's internal links from other pages on your website and external links out from your page to authoritative sources. This is because pages that receive a lot of internal links are interpreted as important by Google. So if you're trying to rank a page that's important to your website, you need to link to it from other pages. So go through your website and find other pages you can link from without hindering the user experience. A great way to do this is to perform a Google search for site colon your website uk plus double quote keyword double quote. This brings back all the pages on your website that mention your chosen keyword, allowing you to now easily go through and internally link to your target page. You then want to go through and add external links from your page to authoritative and relevant websites. This is because linking out to other web pages that are related to your topic helps Google better understand the topic of your page, and so it's beneficial to externally link to other websites that add value to your content. By externally linking to authoritative web pages, Google can see that your page is likely packed full of valuable, well-researched information, helping you rank higher in the SERPs. Just remember to make the link open in a new tab using the target equals underscore blank anchor tag element. This will prevent you from losing website visitors. External links can help your on-page SEO, but they're never worth losing a visitor over. And that concludes this on-page SEO tutorial. If you follow the advice in this video, you are sure to see some truly amazing results. But if you want to know even more about on-page SEO, I've put together a super in-depth guide that covers just about everything there is to know on my agency's website, On Top Marketing. You'll learn the exact types of images you need to be using for best results, how to create more topical relevancy through URL hierarchies, how to make your SERP listing three times the size of your competitors, how to spot canonicalization issues that will kill your traffic, how to write category content for e-commerce pages that attract buyers to your website, how to write blog content that actually gets relevant traffic, and more. Just search on top marketing on page SEO or click the link at the bottom of the description. But before you do that, make sure you leave a comment down below telling me your favorite on page SEO tip. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.